What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to GMI's World Podcast, and we're going to be kicking off a Week 9 NFL 2019 uh, season, and um, the Sunday games were very, very interesting. We start off in London, uh, Texas and the J Texans and the Jaguars. Um, obviously, we got to see, I, I don't know what Gardner Minshew was doing, but it kind of opens it up for Nick Foles. Um, I don't think many people expect much from the Jaguars this year regardless, because it was kind of the opportunity that we were uh, most of us were waiting for to see if he could actually, you know, sustain himself after winning a Super Bowl uh, with the Eagles. He got injured. Gardner Minshew, I don't know what was going on for the most part. He had some numbers afterwards in garbage time, but the Texans completely dominated this game and it was an absolute joke. So uh, Deshaun Watson gave a plug to Popeye's chicken and it was just like, all right, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you talking about, dog? Do some by the healing of his eye from Popeye chicken sandwiches. Listen, we don't we don't need to worry about that. The bottom line is the Texans took care of a team that they were supposed to take care of, and that's the bottom line. Let's jump into the Redskins and the Bills because this was very very interesting. The Redskins came in, you know, AJ Peterson running around like a savage. I don't know exactly what's happening, but it was good to see that the Bills were able to handle business because the no the noticeable trend that we're seeing is that a lot of teams that are trash are coming out and beating teams with better records. And it's starting to get a little stupid. And I was just happy to see that the Bills is like, you know what? We're not doing that today. There's certain things that we got to take care of. And they handled their business ultimately. So it wasn't really something that was surprising because I think many people chose the Bills anyway. So, um, you know, the Redskins might as well tank the rest of the season like everybody else is trying to tank and figure out what, what's going to happen later on in the draft. But it's been, uh, you know, it's been really, really bad for the Redskins uh, this season. So there's no surprise there with that game. Uh, the Titans and the Panthers. Um... I, I don't know, bro. Like the t Paul Malcolm Butler said, he had like a what do you have a broken wrist? Like all kinds of things are going on. But the Titans, I, I don't know, man. We have to wait to see how it, it turns out. But it's looking pretty bad over there. Derrick Henry was running around like a wild savage. But other than that, Christian McCaffrey, man, that dude's still balling. Like every time you look up, the dude's running for a while. Even when they got blown up by the 49ers, this dude somehow breaks a massive run. Like it, it's, it seems like he's going to be a really good player in this league um, as long as he can stay healthy. So we have to see how that goes along. But I can't wait to see how their season turns out because we're going to ultimately have to take a look at Cam Newton not returning as a Panther. If, if, if it's me, if it's me, I'm done with Cam Newton. I'm just saying, like, bro, like, okay, get a new start someplace else. You, you haven't been working out for us for a while. Whether you're saying you're injured, you're not injured, you know, whatever it is, I think he needs a fresh start someplace else. I don't think they mess up the chemistry there. Vikings and the Chiefs. This was a huge win, um, primarily because they did it without Mahomes. Uh, the Vikings had, you know, several opportunities to win this game. Um, defensively, they gave up some, you know, huge plays at the end. Obviously, the pass to Tyreek Hill set them up for the uh, game-winning uh, field goal. Um, but it was huge to see them win the game without Mahomes. Now, Patrick Mahomes has a dislocated kneecap, but he's running out on the field like an absolute... I, I don't know what he's doing, but he jumped up in the air a couple of times, so it looks like he's healthy enough to play. I don't know what he's doing, guys. You know what I'm saying? Because if I have a dislocated kneecap and I'm the franchise QB, I don't care what my team does. I'm not jumping up in the air. I'm going to go give some handshakes, bro, but he was way too excited. I thought he might have did something else to himself while he's in the middle of a rehab, so we got to wait to see, but it looks like he might be ready to go sooner than later, which is a, it's pretty good news uh, for the Chiefs because they're still standing there at 6-3, six, uh, six and three. so, you know, it's fine where they are right now is what I'm trying to say, and I don't think many people expected them to win any games without Patrick Mahomes um, based on the quarterback situation, but they were able to uh, pull this out. For the Vikings, very, very disappointing that you can't beat a team without Patrick Mahomes. And the Chiefs defense is not that good. So there's really no excuse for what happened there. But again, we have to figure out as we get further into the season, which right now is, we're kind of seeing who's going to do what. So it's starting to get a little interesting. The Jets and the Dolphins, well, we knew who the Jets were. And with the Jets showing their true colors, it's making a lot of people wonder, how did they beat the Cowboys? Like, if the Cowboys are supposed to be going to the playoffs and they're supposed to be doing all these things, how did the Jets do it? Because the Dolphins just came in and dominated them, and I don't know what's going on. I, like, it was it was almost surreal to see this happen because, realistically, Fitz Magic, you would think that they're going to tank the season. You would think, like, you know what? The Dolphins, they're probably just going to tank it. Like, they suck, whatever. But they beat the Jets, and you're like, what? Th this, team, this team beat the Cowboys. So the Cowboys have to be god-awful or something else is going on. I don't know. Could the Cowboy fans go tell me, yo, bro, this happened, that happened? I don't know. That's not what this is about. The bottom line is the Dolphins beat you. Okay, that, that's all that really needs to be said. We don't need to even talk about anything else with it. It's absolutely and utterly ridiculous. I don't know what's going on. 
but it, it it's re like it's real. It's real. Like yeah, the Dolphins beat the Jets. Bears and the Eagles. The Eagles played pretty well. Um, we have to go ahead and see what's going on with the Bears. Very, very like I don't know what they are. Okay, Trubisky was getting dominated a lot, but the pass rush was on for the Eagles. But I don't know what's going on with the Bears defense. Like, you see what I'm saying? Like, even with Trubisky, we knew what Trubisky was. He's still growing and stuff like that. I'm not ready to give up on him. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, like, I, every time I was, every time I flipped the channel and I was looking, like, the dude was getting sacked or something was going, he was getting knocked to the ground. I, I don't know. I don't know. All I know is that we know that the Bears weren't that crazy offensively, but their defense is what set the tone. And they were just giving up major plays all day. They gave up key plays. It wasn't like they, they, they just didn't play any defense, but they gave up key plays that they should not have given up. And that was the biggest part of the game. And that's what was unacceptable in regards to the game. The, you know, just continuously giving up yards. It, it just didn't make any sense. Um, very, very tough to watch, man. Very, very tough to watch what the Bears are doing right now. I know the Bear fans are very, very disappointed. Colts and the Steelers. Uh, Bris what is it? Brissett? That dude? Brissett? Or whatever. Jacoby Brissett. I usually call him Jacoby Brissett. Uh, well, Brisket, I usually called him. Um, just like I used to call Byron Leftwich, Byron Sandwich. But he's hurt. And the Colts, I don't know what's going to be going on with them, but the Steelers are winning games, and you Steeler fans are probably very, very happy, but I wouldn't be too happy. Even though you beat a team that has a pretty good defense, um, your schedule has a lot of savages on it remaining, but it was huge to see them get the win. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't really argue it. Um, they were able to come out and, and handle their business, but at, at the end of the day, we have to figure out certain things about these teams. Like I said, going forward, I don't think the Steelers are stout enough offensively to compete you know going into the playoffs many of you guys specifically Steeler fans said that they're going to make the playoffs I still have I, I reserve my doubts uh in regards to that but again you beat the Colts without their starter it is what it is bro have a good day Lions and the Raiders bro I, look let me just say this about John Gruden I don't know what was going on in this game and what was happening as far as like you know the Lions when, when he when when Stafford got tripped up on that third down and then he had to go what was the second down and he had to go on a third he threw it he tried to throw a dot then fourth down and then they, they they have an opportunity to try to score at the goal line and they come out in goal line when Stafford was pretty much playing pretty well I don't know why they didn't go out five wide give him a chance he was on fire towards the end of the game but the Raiders ultimately you know Josh Jacobs bro that dude is looking pretty stout we have to see you know if he's gonna continue to do that the Raiders having a run game like that sets up everything else that needs to be done obviously for Derek Carr so the Raiders could be very, very dangerous, bro, silently and, and start to play well. And John Gruden might look like a genius, even though he got rid of Khalil Mack and Amari Cooper. He might still look like, yo, bro, he's that dude. That It's going to be crazy, man, the way that this is starting to level out. I'm, I'm getting really excited about the playoff aspirations. The Buccaneers and the Seahawks. This was an unbelievable game. Is Jason Myers cut yet? That kicker? That dude sucks. But that's not what this is about. Russell Wilson, MVP, bro. Like, if anybody wants to, you know, dispute that with me, we can go ahead and, like, that dude. No, just imagine this, bro. You drive down the field. Your kicker goes out there from 40 yards, misses the kick. You come back out and go right back down the field and do whatever you want. In a game like this that was so back and forth, Jameis Winston actually played pretty well. Mike Evans has been balling out. But just the way that he handled, Russell Wilson, man, the way that he handled it, man, like, it was a beautiful thing to watch. That's all I can really say. The Seahawks are looking pretty good. The Browns and the Broncos. The funniest part about this is not Baker Mayfield's mustache after the game. It was Jermaine Whitehead. Maybe it was like a um, a fake account or whatever. Well, I don't know. People are saying it was fake, but this dude went wild on Twitter. He, uh, you know, obviously he got his Twitter account suspended. Uh, whoever that was, I don't think it was him because the dude only had like a thousand followers. I, I don't know what's going on, but it was wild and ridiculous what was going on. And this is another thing that I try to point out to people. Don't interact with just, you know, negativity on social media. Just block people or don't use social media. Because people, when you're losing and you're down, that's the best time for people to, you know, to attack you. And this guy, you know, they were going wild on him. Like, this dude, Jermaine Whitehead, bro, like, it was wild. I, I don't know what's going to happen with him. If it's true with the stuff that was going on, we have to wait to see if that's actually him. I don't know if it was, because it's just so ridiculous, the stuff that was being written. Like, I have to assume that it's fake. You see what I'm saying? In my position, it's no, because I'm like, this dude's in the NFL. It's no way you're saying that. But again, I don't know what these things are about. You lose to a team that puts out a quarterback there that I've never even heard of. And um, it, it was just, why, like, I don't know what's happening with that team. But two and six, it, it's crazy. I don't know what's going to happen. Freddie Kitchens might get fired probably by 
you know, week 15 or something like that. The dude has no idea what he's doing, but th that has nothing to do with it. The, the biggest thing about it was Jermaine Whitehead and Baker Mayfield's mustache. The Packers and the Chargers, very, very disappointed in the Packers. Aaron Rodgers was getting rushed like a savage. But that dude, what was it, Melvin Ingram and, uh, uh, what was that, uh, Joey Bosa? The brother of the Nick Bosa dude in the, the 49ers? Like, bro, hey, them dudes is out there. But I don't know. Hey, yo, Aaron Rodgers had no shot. He had no shot last night. No shot at all. That Chargers defense came to play. It was not a joke. Yo, I saw that man just like dudes were just flying in continuously. And I thought the Packers had one of the best O-lines in the National Football League, but I guess I was wrong about that. Obviously, the Chargers went out, and this is the Chargers that people expected to be out there, and they weren't. And now they are. Now they are. So let's see what happens going forward. Patriots and the Ravens, man. I don't know. I can't say Tom Brady's overrated because Edelman, you know, gave up that, you know, fumble for six or whatever like that. But you could see that Tom Brady still drove down the field and was able to, you know, do what they had to do. They just couldn't stop Lamar Jackson. They just could not stop Lamar Jackson. That's pretty much what it was. And then defensively, they were able to make Tom Brady uncomfortable. I'm not ready to say that Tom Brady can't come through and finish up the job. It's a regular season loss, their first loss of the season. It is what it is. But we got to see what Lamar Jackson can actually do and how dangerous he actually is because he's a video game in the NFL. You can't tap. Bro, he had these, these linemen just looking like complete idiots. I, I, like, I was, wow. I had to tweet it out. Like, that dude is unbelievable. I can't, I, I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. And right now, he's so young, he could actually ultimately be way better than Michael Vick with everything that he does. Throwing the football, running the football, and everything like that. So, it was unbelievable. But I'm not ready to say that Tom Brady is overrated yet. Um, I reserve the right to kind of see what goes on. It's the first loss. And that's pretty much all I got for you guys. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the podcast. I'm going to see you guys and girls next time. One love.